the head coach of the San Diego State Aztecs, Rocky Long, is our guest now on Double X 1090. Rocky, Craig Elston back here in Mira Mesa. Thanks for a few minutes on the phone. My pleasure, Craig. How are you doing today? I'm doing real well, Coach. Uh, let me ask you a, a lot of things uh, that you see on the sideline on a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday evening. When you go back and you look at the coach's tape, uh, you, you form some different opinions. After you watched the full coach's tape and, and went over it, what are your thoughts, uh, what maybe new uh, came out of that? Uh, not a lot new. Uh, obviously, the turnovers that uh, turned into touchdowns uh, were critical to our efforts, and uh, I thought we played poorly on defense in the first half, and we played very good defense on, in the second half, which was better than I thought we did. And and uh, our punts were pretty good. Our kickoffs and coverage was pretty good. So there are some positives. Obviously, the negative is we lost. Uh, unquestionably. Uh, we had Renee Siliuano as a guest on Double X 1090 yesterday afternoon with uh, Ted Mendenhall and Jordan Carruth, your Aztec warrior, uh, one of your Aztec warriors on defense. Renee made the point. He said, you know, the way we played defensively after halftime, that's how we should have come out to start the game. How much of that, in your estimation, Coach, was the the incredibly difficult environment of playing at the Seattle Seahawks home stadium? I, I don't know. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, but obviously we didn't play well in the first half, and they played much better in the second half, so... I'm sure they were excited about playing, maybe a little overly excited, and and the crowd and the noise adds to that. Uh, maybe we were not communicating very well because we couldn't hear each other, and we learned how to do it as the game went along. But obviously there was a difference between halves, and somehow we have to figure that out. Overall, when you saw the way that your team was able to contain Keith Price, uh, a, a kid who is going to be an NFL quarterback and is an outstanding dual threat, that's something that augurs well for the rest of the season. It won't be the first dual threat quarterback you'll face. Well, that's very true, and he and he's really a good player, and and he kind of had his way with us in the first half. I think he completed I don't know seventy or eighty percent of his passes in the second half. He was down to fifty percent, and and didn't get out of the way very often. We sacked him three times, so hopefully that's a good omen for the rest of the year. We're talking with Rocky Long, San Diego State Aztecs head coach here on Double X Ten Ninety. I'm Craig Elston filling in for Josh and Sherrod today. Coach, everyone's been talking about the two-point go-for-it chart uh, and and the way that it, that dynamic impacted the game. I, I saw some stories saying that on Sunday you looked back, you reviewed all of your choices, you felt very secure in every decision you made. Uh, what is the basis for that security of the decision? Well, all those uh, decisions are made before the game. We have a game plan going in. We have statistic analysis of the two teams playing. And we build uh, a chart for ourselves that tells us when to go for it, when to kick field goals, when to punt. And going into a game, we, we try to stick to our game plan. That doesn't mean that later on in the year the game plan won't be different. It doesn't mean that we might change uh, as the game is going along. But as long as the game is close and in doubt, we're going to go by our early game plan and and only adjust if we have to. As a man who's been calling uh, defensive calls for so long, a brilliant defensive coordinator as well as head coach over the decades, Rocky, what is the difference uh, in the fourth quarter as a coach? How does it alter your game plan or, or the way that you might call a play when your team is either up or down one possession as opposed to up or down two possessions? Well, obviously you get, I mean, you get more aggressive if you're down by – more than uh, 10 points or so, you get a lot more aggressive on both offense and defense. You try to cause turnovers on defense. You try to get in many plays or big plays as you can on offense, and you try to catch back up. Now, if you're ahead by 10 points or more, you're going to try to run the ball on offense and run the clock, and you're probably going to be a lot more conservative on defense, trying not to give up big plays. When I looked at, because I've talked about on the air, you know, yesterday we went through the game in detail and whatnot. Um, and when I look at the decisions that have been held up to criticism, all right, uh, going for it the first time on, on fourth down, on your opening touchdown, hey, like you said, that's part of the game plan that you brought in. You're executing your game plan. Second time, you're chasing the point. You, you missed it the first time. You've got to make it the second time to even things out uh, and get the score to seven. The one I was curious about and I wanted to ask you more in detail about was fourth and six from the nine uh, in a situation where you're down nine and you chose the go for it to go for six there, go for the touchdown, 
as opposed to bringing out the field goal kicker for what we would presume would be a makeable kick, a 25-yard field goal. What would, what, in your estimation, in the coaching staff's estimation, what was the value of potentially, presuming you made it, and you got there and you got it, even went for two, made it, of being down one in that spot as opposed to putting the field goal in front, kicking the field goal first and being down six, knowing that down nine, you're eventually going to need a touchdown and a field goal to take the lead. Well, at that uh, at that time in the game, we thought we had a real good play that gave us a much better chance to make it on fourth down. Uh, obviously, it didn't work, and that's why it's held up uh, for some discussion. But uh, the plan was to make it there and, and then be able to kick a field goal later on, and you didn't have to move the ball quite as far, and we were going to have to score a touchdown eventually anyway to win the game. So we thought we had the best chance to do it there with the play that we had had called, and so we went with our – our feeling, it's also on our chart that we should have gone for it. How much faith do you have in your kickers, Rocky? I have a lot of faith in them. It wasn't part of the game plan this week, but uh, I think I misrepresented that. That I don't think it was our kickers that it was. I wasn't worried about our kickers. I was worried about staying not worried, but I was willing to stay with our game plan throughout the game. We're talking with Rocky Long, Aztecs head coach here on San Diego Sports Leader X Ten Ninety. The Aztecs will open their home schedule uh, when they take on Army this Saturday night at Qualcomm Stadium. Uh, let's get off that now and talk a little bit about the offense, Rocky. Uh, Ryan Katz, his first game as your signal caller uh, in a game in anger, and I think a lot of fans were impressed with his mobility. I'm guessing when you reviewed the, the coach's tape, you probably don't want him scrambling that much, ideally. Well, I thought for the first time out, Ryan did a good job. Uh, obviously, we have to get him improve in all areas. Uh, Ryan has to improve, too. I, I thought he scrambled well at times when he saw an opening and got us some much-needed yardage and some first downs. I thought he pulled it down a little bit too early sometimes. I think there were some, some receivers coming open, and he could have thrown the ball to them. Now, obviously, he had to scramble a couple times because he got pressure. Uh, from the other defense where he had to get out of there or he was going to get sacked. So overall, I thought he played well. Uh, I think we have to improve on his patience in the pocket a little bit, but I love the way he can get out of trouble and make plays. Overall, when you look at the offensive line as well, there was a lot of question, obviously, Bryce Quigley uh, making the transition from tight end to left tackle. How did he grade out on tape? Well, I thought our whole offensive line as a whole was kind of average. I, I, you know, you always hope for the best. We knew there might be some problems there. We had uh, eight critical errors in the offensive line assignment-wise, and then I don't think we were as aggressive as we should have been the whole game. So we look for big-time improvement this week. Rocky Long, our guest. Now, we, we've got Army next up on the schedule, Coach, and uh, Renee was talking about this yesterday afternoon on the air. Uh, when you think about uh, preparing a defense to face an offense and you think about the spread option attack like Washington runs and then you think about the pure triple option uh, as Army runs, certainly you couldn't come up with maybe two offenses more far, or further apart than what you guys have to deal with week one to week two. Well, that's, that's the way college football is. I mean, it doesn't happen in the pros. Uh, it does sometimes in high school, but in college football, you see a spread team one week, and the next week you might see a triple option team, and it makes it very difficult on defenses. I think the triple option is a great offense, and it's hard to stop, and it's almost impossible to get ready for in three days. But we have to get ready so we can contain it and give us a chance to win. And you've got five out of the next six at home, Rocky. What, what are you looking for in terms of the, the students at San Diego State and, and the San Diego State football fans out there in the county to help really drive this team forward? It seems pretty straightforward to say it, but if you win your home games, you go to a bowl game this year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to have home games, and I hope that the fans come out. And I hope the students come out because I think that at home, if you get a good uh, crowd support and you get those kind of things when you're maybe a little dull or not, things aren't going very well, the crowd can bring you back with their energy. I think the energy of a home crowd can make a huge difference in close games. So I hope we have that kind of energy in our stadium this weekend. Well, Coach Long, I look forward to seeing you out there. I'll be there for the Army game this Saturday night. Very much looking forward to it. Big supporter of Aztecs football. I appreciate you coming on, answering all the questions with us here on San Diego Sports Leader Double X 1090. And uh, best of luck to the Aztecs next week and throughout the season. All right. Thank you for having me on.